Hey there, welcome to Properties of Radicals. We're going to take a look at how to simplify and use various operations like addition, subtraction, and multiplication with radicals. So usually when we saw square root of 75, we would try to think of perfect squares. So what perfect squares could go into 75? This one works out really nicely with 25 times 3. That's the exact same thing. Well, now I can do square root of 25, which gives me 5, and then square root of 3 doesn't simplify, so I'm going to leave it under the root. This worked out really nicely. Here's the thing. You can also do this another way. So I like to put a 2 on the outside, and you're about to see why. So I'm going to take the 25 and break it up a little bit more into 5 times 5, and then 3 kind of breaks down into the 1. Here's the thing. You can kind of see that I did square root of 25, and I just took a 5 out. Here's another way to think of it, like groups. I can see that I have a square root, so I'm looking for a group of 2. Well, here I have a group of 2, which happens to be 5. So that means I'm going to take a 5 out. The 3, I don't have an extra group, so the 3 stays underneath is kind of how this method works. You can also think of it like this, 5 squared times 3. Same thing again, square root of 5 squared gives me just 5, square root of 3 stays underneath. So that's where the 2 is coming from, the group of 2. So easy way to remember it is root, grab your group, kind of root, group. So let's take a look at things before we get too loony. So let's try square root of 32. Well, the old fashioned way says, think of a perfect square. So 16 and two perhaps, that would work out really nicely because that would just simplify to four root two. Works really, really great when we have square roots. We're used to thinking of perfect squares. Cubes, on the other hand, are a little bit more challenging, which is where I like to use that group idea. So a cube root, I'm looking for a group of three to take out. Okay, so cube root of 32. So I need two numbers that multiply to give me 32. So I'm going to say that's the same thing as 4 times 8. Okay, I'm going to break this up a little bit more. So cube root... 4 is the same thing as 2 times 2. 8 is the same thing as 2 times 2 times 2. So break it up as much as you possibly can. Now we're going to look for a group of 3. Ah, I see that. Well, the remaining don't really work out. So I get to take a 2 out. 2 cube root and what's left underneath. 2 times 2, which is 4. So this one is going to be 2 cube root of 4 is the way that we can simplify that. If it helps, you can think of perfect cubes. It's just a little bit harder. You can also do that with 8 and 4 because cube root of 8 happens to be 2, and then you have cube root of 4. So you'll see you get the same answer either way. It just depends which way you want to focus on. Okay, let's take a look at a group of 4. Okay, looks like I've got one group. So 1, 2 is going to come out. And then I still have that one left underneath. So 2, fourth root of 2 for a final answer on example 3. All right, the fourth one. So it looks like I'm doing a cube root of 24, which isn't too bad. So I'm looking for a group of three. So again, try to break up the 24 as much as you possibly can. So I did four and six. That was the first numbers I could think of. Okay, I'm going to break the four down to be two times two and the six to be two times three. All right, I'm looking for a group of three, which works out really nicely with this one because I can see the twos which is going to be your final answer. So here's that group that's going to come out. And then that three is going to be left underneath because it didn't quite have enough. Ooh, well, if I try to think of some numbers like nine and two, okay, nine breaks down to three times three, but there's not a group here. There's not enough for me to take out. 
So if that happens on some of these, don't panic. These actually are a little bit nicer because this is the final answer. Cube root of 18 isn't going to get any smaller and that's fine. You don't have to worry. So let's pause and take a closer look at something that looks like this because it's kind of intimidating. So here's the good news. I can see that these are both fourth roots of seven. So try to think of it like how we would simplify something like this. I've got three X and I have five X. Okay, well, the way that we would simplify that would be to subtract the numbers in the front and say we just have negative 2x left over. That same idea is going to help us here. So I can still do 3 minus 5 is negative 2. The difference is I now have fourth roots of 7, and that's going to be a final answer. There's really not much else we can do. This one works out really, really nicely because we've got square roots of 15 and we have cube roots of 21. So here are my common or my like terms here. Here are the like terms here. You can see that I tried to break the 15 down and I tried to break the cube root of 21 down, but it just didn't work out that way. So guess what? Final answer boxed in red. Right now with eight, I've got square root of 50, I've got square root of 18, I have square root of 32. None of those match, so it kind of seems like they're not going to simplify. Oh, well, let's try to break these down. So the five's gonna stay on the outside. Well, 50 is the same thing as 25 times two. So for me, if I see square roots, I still try to do them the old fashioned way. I try to think of perfect squares because that's a little easier for me. So the five on the outside is gonna stay the same. I see square root of 25. Well, that's the same thing as five. I still have square root of two. That's not gonna change. All right, so let's try to simplify this. So I've got 25 roots of two minus six roots of two, 36 roots of two. So now all of these are roots of two. They're all like terms. So all I'm gonna do is combine them up. So I'm gonna have 30 plus 25 is 55 roots of two for a final answer in the red. All right, let's take a closer look at nine. Nine, these clearly don't look the same. They both are cube roots of three, but what's underneath are not like terms yet. So 24, let's try to break this down. So I see cube root 24. Well, that's the same thing as three times eight. So three times eight, eight can break down into two times two times two. And it looks like I have an extra X underneath. So those are gonna stay put. Try another one. I see cube root of three, okay? And then I see an X to the fourth. So that's four X's, okay? I'm looking for groups of three. So, okay, I've got a group here and I have a group here. Okay, I can see that I'm gonna take a two out and then I have a cube root of a three is left and an X is left, so those stay put. Let's take a look at the same, at the next one. Looks like I can take an X out of that one. I see cube root, I see a three, and I see an X. You can leave that as a final answer. Two minus X, I can't bring those back together like I could on those last two. And that's okay if it works out that way. Well, the first one on number 10, I see a square root, which I'm definitely more familiar with, and I see multiplication. Multiplication is nice because we don't need to have common terms like we do with addition. We're simply gonna multiply everything together. So I can multiply the three and the 48 together, and I can multiply the Ds together. Here's the good thing. Here's where our laws of exponents are gonna come into play because when I multiply numbers, I'm going to add those exponents so you can clearly see how I got those together. All right, three times 48 is, oh, look at that, 144. And I've got D to the 18. And I still have a square root, 
of d to the 18. That's a little bit more unfamiliar. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to rewrite that with fraction exponents to see exactly what's going to happen. So instead of doing square root of d to the 18, I'm going to make that d to the 18 to the 1 half exponent because now I can see that these get multiplied together, which give me a very nice final answer of 12 d to the ninth. So you can think of these like division. So that's dividing exponents. We don't really get to see that very often. So it's fun when they actually do appear. So we're going to start with a little bit of distribution. So I've got cube root and I, it looks like I have a times 2a squared. So there's 2a cubed. So there's the first one. And then I do see a plus sign between them. And we're going to try this one. So it looks like I'm going to have a times 16a squared, cube root, of course, 16a cubed. All right, again, I can't add those yet because they're not similar. So let's see if we can rearrange a few things. Here's the good news. Cube root of two, I don't know what that is, but cube root of a cubed is just a. So I get to leave that. I'm going to do cube root of 2. So I'm going to do 16. Okay, well, that's really 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. I'm going to break it up as much as I can. Still have an A cubed. Looks something like that. All right, now we're going to look for groups of 3. So here I'm going to have cube root. It's going to stay the same, but I'm going to pull a 2 in the front and an A in the front, and it looks like I have cube root of two, all right? They both are cube roots of two, and they're both A's. So I can combine these to get three A cube root of two for my final answer, and I can box it up. Man, I love a good box. It makes me feel so accomplished. Looks like we're doing some multiplication, so I'm gonna try to distribute. So I've got two, and square root of six. Okay, well, those aren't really the same, so I'm gonna keep them separate. Now here, I do have a minus sign, so I'm gonna keep that. I have a three on the outside, but it looks like I'm gonna do six times six underneath. Okay, so let's see if this is gonna shrink up anymore. So I've got six, so I've got square root of 36. Oh, well, I actually know what that is. That's a pretty friendly number. So root 6 times root 6 canceled out just gave me 6. So you can always skip that step eventually if you start to catch that. So the roots ended up canceling out for this one. So that final answer, we're just going to do 2 cube root of 6 minus 18. And again, this one has a root 6. This one doesn't, so I can't combine those. I'm going to have to leave them separate. First thing I see is a squared, and this is where most of the mistakes will happen because most will try to distribute the square and say, oh, that's 3. This is 5, so the answer is negative 2. Woohoo! I'm done. Oh, if only it were that simple because, again, anytime you see a squared, I think you probably know you're going to write it twice. And then let's go ahead and distribute. So I can see root 3 times root 3. Well, it's the same as square root of 9. But if you are comfortable, you can cancel them out. I see a minus root 3 times root 5. So that's root 15. Let's do the same thing underneath. And let's try to shrink everything up. So that's the same thing as 3. Looks like these pieces in the middle, I have 2 roots of 15 and I have a plus 5. And again, leave those separate. This one has no root 15. Okay, here on number 14, I went ahead, multiplied everything out. You can see exactly what I multiplied together. So you can see my blue pieces. So I have 2 times 2, root 6 and root 6. So if they're under the root, they stay together. They're on the outside, 
then they also get multiplied. So you can see on the green, I did two times four and three times six. Okay, let's simplify that a little bit more. So you can see I did four, and then I have square root of 36, which is six. Again, if you are getting really comfortable and you start to see how these start to cancel out, like root six times root six gives me six, that is okay with me. And if you saw it on this one as well, root three times root three gives me three and go ahead and combine some stuff up. I'm sure you caught on that these canceled out. I had a positive eight root 18 and I had a negative eight root 18, which means I can just subtract those final numbers and get negative 24. We'll do some extra practice in class, so stay tuned.